since the mid-1980s, legendary cars have rolled out of the gates of this car factory. From the Ferrari Testarossa to the beautiful Alfa Romeo Brera, all were manufactured here. Today, the site lies abandoned, leaving behind old machinery and artifacts. In this episode, we will share the incredible story of this old car factory. Our first visit dates back to 2015. During that time, Alfa Romeo Brabras and Spiders were all left abandoned on the site. These were test vehicles, used for crash testing and driving tests. Some still had their traces of testing camouflage on them. Unfortunately, at the time, we couldn't gain access to the premises. Today, all the cars that were once outside have been scrapped. The terrain we are exploring today is quite extensive. It contains every aspect of car manufacturing, including even a test track. Let's take a moment to delve into what this terrain truly represents. This area was once part of Pininfarina. Pininfarina is considered a coach building company specializing in the design and construction of car bodies. They have gained fame as one of the most influential companies in car design over the past century. Alright, we have reached the test track. Before the cars could leave the factory, they had to undergo testing to detect possible production faults. This testing occurred across multiple courses. Some courses were designed to test the suspension. while others were used for water testing. However, much of it has been reclaimed by nature. The story of this terrain actually begins in the US instead of Italy. Cadillac is known for producing many luxury cars. Many of them were large and heavy, and not as sporty as the European counterparts. In the 1980s, Cadillac made a decision to establish a brand new image. Cadillac Alante. It is a luxury roadster unlike any that has come before it. A Cadillac designed and handcrafted in Europe by the designer of Ferraris and Rolls Royce. They call it the world's longest assembly line. It stretches more than 3,300 miles across the Atlantic, linking Turin, Italy and Detroit, Michigan. They call it an air bridge, the Alante Air Bridge, a first ever air transportation system for a production automobile. One Alitalia and two Lufthansa aircraft are dedicated to the air bridge. Three flights a week will each carry 56 Alante bodies in custom built cradles to their Detroit destination. This type of production was truly unique and above all, very expensive. Pininfarina constructed a brand new, state-of-the-art factory for, for the production of the Alante, which is the facility we are exploring today. In the end, the car proved to be just too expensive, resulting in a commercial failure. Only 20,000 cars were sold during its seven-year production cycle.
We have now reached the factory floors, which still contains remnants of the production line. We are currently at the stage where the engine blocks were connected to the gearboxes. The assembly line consisted of 57 different stations. Where various steps were taken to assemble the cars. Approximately 70 cars could be completed in a single day. All kinds of papers were left behind, which used to provide instructions to the workers. It truly makes one wonder about the dynamic and lively atmosphere that must have existed here in its prime. At its peak around 300 workers were employed here. What set this place apart upon its opening was the fact that there wasn't a real need for floor managers. Many tasks were carried out by computers. This was quite futuristic for the 1980s. The factory was considered a glimpse into the future when it was opened. Now we have arrived at the most impressive section of the production line. One notable feature was a large robot that used to install the front window on the car. This marked the end of the line. After this step the cars were considered finished and ready for testing. Following the cancellation of the Cadillac production, the factory briefly produced the Ferrari Testarossa. However, something even bigger was in the works. Enter the coupé version of the French Peugeot 406. Designed, tested and entirely built by Pinion Farina, this car was a resounding success. With a production tally of 107,000 units, the car's sleek and sporty design led it to win numerous design awards upon its debut. It even earned a nickname, Poor Man's Ferrari. This period can be regarded as the factory zenith in terms of operations. Now we have reached the offices and the locker section of the complex. This is the main entrance, featuring a plaque listing the various activities for which Pinoferina was responsible. Accompanied by some impressive statistics. Truly, in the past world of design, it was a behemoth. Other sections of the offices had been quite stripped by copper thieves prompting us to move upstairs in search of better luck. Upstairs we encountered a sort of lounge, which unfortunately was in a state of disarray. Adjacent to it, a rather impressive sight greeted us. This is the canteen, where workers took their breaks and enjoyed their meals. With ample natural lighting and bright yellow seats, it truly was a sight to behold. Sadly, all of the seat bases had been stolen, which is quite odd. But why did this once state-of-the-art factory end up in this sad state? After the production of the 406 Coupe and a few other models, Pina Farina entered into her contract with Alfa Romeo. The Brera and the Spider models were designated to be built here. These two models marked the last cars produced in this factory. 
but also the conclusion of small-scale car manufacturing. Following the 2008 financial crisis, it became impractical to produce cars in such limited numbers. With this shift in the market, Pinaferina lost its customer base. The workers began to protest, leading to a year-long series of actions aimed at saving their workplace. In 2011, the last car crawled off the assembly line, signifying the end of the factory story. And in a sense, marking a turning point for the Italian auto industry. Locker room still containing some clothes. And memorabilia. Remain within the empty, desolate halls. With this, we have concluded our exploration of this impressive history and complex. It is indeed quite sad to witness the decline of, of such a historically significant factory that was responsible for creating so many beautiful models. Pinaferina was acquired by the Indian brand Mahindra back in 2015. Today they continue to develop cars and other products, albeit not on the same scale as in the past. As for the factory's future, it remains relatively obscure. There was one proposal to establish an Intel chip factory on the premises. But this plan was scrapped at the outset of 2023. It is likely that the site will continue to rot away over time. <laughs>